Christy, your friendly neighborhood, or not quite so neighborhood, speech language pathologist and child communication and behavior specialist. Welcome to a new video. As I was filming the video last time, which was about gustatory sensory needs, I, during my research for that, a lot of people lump other sensory needs under the gustatory arch. And I don't really think we should be doing that. I think we need to tease out what are gustatory needs versus these other needs that kids might have. Because if we don't know what the source of the behavior is, then we don't know how to meet that behavior in a more appropriate way. That is what we're gonna talk about today. The basic theme of this video is, what if my child is always chewing on stuff? possibly stuff that other kids don't chew on, or possibly beyond the range when other kids chew on those things. And possibly this is maybe not such a safe behavior, especially in the age of pandemics, which can be scary when we have kids who are constantly have their fingers in their mouth or are licking the handrail at the amusement park. <laughs> my, I've mentioned this before, but my little niece, as typical as she is in many areas, her sensory system is not typical, and she is always all over stuff. So when she was waiting in line at Disney World, she was hanging off all of the railings as they're standing in line and then like smelling them and feeling them with her face. And her mother was not that happy about that because there are germs everywhere and we don't want to bring some sort of virus home from Disney World or anywhere else, if we can at all avoid it. But sometimes our kids just cannot, cannot turn off their sensory needs the way that other people can who maybe don't have that kind of sensory need. So let's talk about things in the mouth. There are a variety of reasons why a child might put things in her mouth. The first one I'm gonna mention is a gustatory need. This was my last video. I'll put a link to it right up there and you can watch that video. The basic premise of a gustatory need is that this child needs more taste sensation. Things that are bitter, things that are sour, things that are sweet. Because that was my last video, the topic of my last video, I'm not going to talk about that in great detail in this video. Instead, I'm gonna offer you some additional reasons your child might be gnawing on stuff. Gustatory is number one. Number two is there might be something wrong with your kid's teeth or mouth. Sometimes our kids don't necessarily feel pain in the place where pain is happening. So sometimes a child might be chewing on stuff to relieve some sense of pain or tension in the mouth or sometimes somewhere else. But let's talk about the mouth first. There could be a gum problem. There could be something stuck between your child's teeth. There could be an actual cavity or a teeth issue. There could be a bite problem. I understand that a lot of our kids, a lot of kids period, don't wanna to go to the dentist, but there are specialty child dentists now who work very carefully with families to make the experience as calm for children as possible. In fact, there are some dentist offices now that specialize in neurodiverse populations. And I just had to choose a new dentist, of course, because we moved across the country. And I was happy to find one that had a sign on the wall that said, entering the no judgment zone. And that made me happy because I do not like to be judged if I have a cavity or if my gum is inflamed. I work hard to take care of my teeth. But still, things happen. We are human beings. We do get exposed to sugar. <laughs> we expose ourselves to sugar. <laughs> and sometimes we're going to floss wrong. One time I went to the dentist and I had an inflamed area because a blueberry seed had gotten stuck in my gums. I didn't even know blueberries really had seeds, but that is what had happened. 
So if your child is gnawing on stuff and it's kind of a new thing for your child, a dentist might be a good option to try, just in case. Another thing a dentist might be able to help you with is number three, which is bruxism, which is clenching the teeth and grinding of the teeth. I do this, I have a specialty guard that I wear at night because at night is when I was doing much of the grinding. I started grinding when I was sick. I have had, I don't know how to describe this, but I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease about 10 years ago. I changed my diet drastically, I changed my lifestyle, and Crohn's is no longer visible inside of my colon, so I don't, I don't know, do I still have Crohn's? I probably could get it back really quickly if I ate what I used to eat. However, it's not visible right now, so maybe I don't have it, I don't know. It's a mystery, but what I'm saying is, when I got sick, my body tried to expel excess tension by grinding my teeth, by trying to help me express some of this fear, anxiety, pain, discomfort, illness, your body tries to get it out. And one of the ways it can do that is through grinding of your teeth. It can help your body feel stabilized. Another thing that grinding teeth can do is give a person who's craving more proprioceptive input, which is going to be my next video, proprioceptive input is the feeling of uh, pressure to your joints and your ligaments and your tendons and your bones. So anything like those kids who run into the wall, those kids who run into you, the kids who want to be squeezed or want to have their heads squished, kids who like being wrapped up like a burrito, kids who wrap themselves up in the curtains or put themselves under the couch cushions. These are all signs that a child might need more proprioceptive input. That's going to be my next video, which hopefully will come out next week. So keep your eyes open for that. If you haven't already subscribed, and you wanna see that video, this would be a good time to subscribe and click that little bell so that you know when my next video comes out. Grinding of the teeth is a really good way for the body to feel proprioceptive input. I think that's why my personal body chose to grind my teeth because I prefer proprioceptive input. I have been known when I've been very upset to ask my husband to sit on me because I just want to feel squished. I want to, not to the point where I can't breathe, not to the point where I feel unsafe or flat. I just want to feel comforted and swaddled. And a lot of our kids want that too. And one of the ways our bodies tries to do that for us is by grinding our teeth. If your child is grinding her teeth, then you might need to get her a mouth guard. Even during the day, these they're just like little clear Invisalign retainers, at least mine is. For a while I wore it in the day, and now I just wear it at night. But if my jaw gets sore again, I'll put it in during the day as well because I know that I'm grinding again. <sighs> that is a good idea because your children, I actually ground the bumps off of my molars. Those bumps are there for a reason. They help us grind up our food. We need them and we're not supposed to be grinding our teeth down. You can grind your teeth down so much that you can expose the underneath part. It can cause cavities. It can cause all sorts of problems. So if you think that your child is grinding her teeth, is chewing on stuff because of this proprioceptive need, then please let's help ourselves and our children to meet these proprioceptive needs in ways that are not going to harm our bodies and in ways that still get that need met. And I guess that's what I'm saying in all of these videos, but in this video particularly, we need to figure out what the underlying purpose of the behavior is so that we can meet it in a way that's going to help instead of just saying, stop that. Don't grind your teeth. Don't bite on that. Don't eat your pencil. We need to figure out why is the child chewing on the pencil? Is it because it has an interesting taste? 
Is it because the child needs something to chew on because she's really stressed? Is it because she needs some input to her jaw, some proprioceptive input to her jaw to express some tension? Is it because she just has a habit of chewing on stuff? And this is thing number four. We've all known people who chewed their nails. My sister-in-law was a crazy nail chewer. My dad is a crazy nail chewer. They don't necessarily have sensory needs, although my dad might. He hasn't been diagnosed because he's of a generation before these things were well known. But he functions okay in the world. <laughs> and he had functional children, at least reasonably functional. But it is not the safest thing to have our hands in our mouth all the time, or in fact ever. And there are ways that we can help kids to not bite their nails or chew on their fingers. It does depend, how we do that depends on the cognitive ability of the child and the developmental level of the child because of course a child who can understand there's germs in the world, there's a dangerous virus, it might be on my hands, it's better if I don't put my hands in my mouth, let's find a different thing that I can do if I feel the need to bite my nails. There are of course aversive methods like like things that taste bitter that you could put on a child's nails. I don't know. I don't prefer that. I think we just offer them a different alternative when we see it happening and we try to break the pattern. Of course, there's also boredom and that kind of goes along with what we're talking about with the, with the habit. It just becomes a habit when we don't have something else to do. We just start chewing on our nails. It's a habit and we can break habits. It takes a long time and it takes consistency, but we can change that. If you think that your child is gnawing on things because of a gustatory need, because your child craves a variety of textures to the taste buds, then please follow the recommendations in that video because I gave you lots of nice recommendations. If you think that your child is chewing on stuff or putting stuff in his mouth because he has a proprioceptive need. So if this is a child who maybe crashes into the wall or puts your hands on his head and wants you to squeeze or you notice the grinding of the jaw, please look out for my next video, which should be coming next week. If your child might have an issue with her teeth, please go to the dentist. Anytime your kid is gnawing on stuff or putting stuff in her mouth that's unusual, go see a dentist. It's always a good idea. And I should say here, I try to say this in all of my sensory videos, but if you notice sensory stuff in your kids that might be not typical, see an occupational therapist if you can, especially an occupational therapist who is a specialist in sensory matters because not all of them are and sometimes they don't have any training at all in sensory stuff. In the gustatory area and in the mouth oral cavity type area, sometimes a speech pathologist might be your best option because we that's, that's kind of our area of expertise as well and many of us are trained in sensory issues regarding the mouth area. So you might have better luck with a speech pathologist in this case. But find somebody who can help you. Know what your need is and know what you want to get out of it when you find your specialized professional. I also have a fifth option of why your child might be gnawing on stuff. Your child might be too sedentary. Sometimes, I notice this in myself, when I am not moving around enough, when I haven't been exercising, when I've been sitting on the couch too much, or whatever, in the car, I get really antsy and I need to do something. I have all of this energy bubbling up from inside me and your body wants to expend it somehow. So you'll notice kids sometimes wiggling their arms or they'll just be jittering around in their chairs or they'll be shaking their foot. I'm shaking my foot, but you can't see it. <laughs> And sometimes this involves chewing on things as well. I think this might be part of my niece's issue. She's just a very high energy, 
active girl and she wants to read all the time but she also needs to move around a lot in order to function at her best. And I think most of us need to move around much more than we do to function at our best. So keep that in mind. Arrange a time every day for your child to run around. Jump on the trampoline, ride a bike, play in the snow, whatever it is, make sure that your kid is active. Kids need to be active. That's gonna help the whole sensory system and it really helps the brain and the development that's going on as kids are growing up. Another thing I would like to say before we wrap this video up is that it's not the best option to just try to get a kid to stop doing something. We need to teach replacement behaviors. For example, if a kid needs gustatory input and we're out in public and I don't have an option to sit down and peel a radish for him, then perhaps I have a mint in my purse and I can quick give the mint to the child before he licks the park bench. If my child has a need to gnaw because she needs proprioceptive input, I can have some chewy jewelry that's not harmful for the teeth. This is really good. It even has a breakaway so that no one can die of choking or asphyxiation. It's very good. This was my niece's. She has now grown out of it, but it is good. We also have these, which um, there are some that are hollow, which offer, actually do not recommend the hollow ones. That's why I have it as an example rather than having it in the classroom because this in the classroom is disgusting. It has been through my dishwasher, so it's safe and clean. But I had a little guy who loved, he needed to chew on stuff all the time to help him stay calm so he wouldn't freak out. So he always had something in his mouth. We provided him chewy tubes, which are just the right sort of size and shape for a kid to really stick it way back there and really gnaw on it. I think I would have benefited from these in elementary school and maybe junior high, but that would have, you know, I would have gotten some looks way back then. But this one, being hollow, gathers spit. And then, if you happen to blow, the spit comes out. It's like a spit volcano, it's disgusting. So I do not recommend the hollow chewy tube. I do recommend the solid one. The reason they make them in different sizes, shapes, and hollownesses is because they offer different resistance. So there's the P and a Q and they're pretty soft and flexible and then there are some that are, this one's pretty soft and flexible. They offer different resistance. So if you're an adult, you're probably going to need one that's a little, that provides more resistance. Whereas if you're really young, you're going to want one that doesn't offer a whole lot of resistance because your jaw is smaller and you don't have as much power that needs to get expelled. So we always want to offer an alternative. If we're gonna say, don't do that, we always wanna have a, do this instead. And we always want to phrase this in the positive. Rather than saying, don't grind your teeth, we will say, oh, bite your beads. And we would hand the beads to the child or we would put them up by her mouth because we we want to reinforce what to do whenever we verbalize something we are reinforcing it and we want to reinforce what we want the child to do rather than what we don't want the child to do same thing why class rules now because studies have been done on this class rules are always phrased in the positive nice hands walking feet sit in chair kind words whatever the school rules are, they're always phrased in the positive. Rather than don't run, don't swear, don't dance at story time, we phrase them in the positive. So instead of saying, don't grind your teeth, bite your beads, bite your beads. And that's what's going to get in the kid's brain. That's what is going to be repeated by his own brain to his own brain. And it's going to enable him to create a new habit a lot better. Thanks for watching this video today. Once again, give me a like and a subscribe if you would like to be part of what's happening on this channel. 
Also, don't forget that next time will be my video on proprioception, which is a huge, huge, big need for uh, everyone, I think. Some people maybe don't need it so much. I could use more proprioception in my life. I know that most kids could really benefit from more in that area, especially our kids who have different neurological development trajectories. They really typically, proprioception is a big one. So don't miss it. I'm going to have all sorts of good resources available for you. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the box down below. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.